Emailing out of Salesforce has been a pain point for quite some time. Now, recently, the Salesforce product teams made big improvements for the email action that we can use inside our Salesforce flows. The situation before that was quite complicated. We can use email alerts to send out emails. We can use the email action inside our Salesforce flows. We can download and install the send better email component uh, by unofficial SF. And to complicate the matter on top of that, we can also use classic email templates, lightning email templates, and also text templates inside Salesforce flows to construct the body of the email. And we had also a few governor limits restrictions that applied for emailing out of Salesforce that was limiting for uh, the admins and the users. Salesforce recently improved those limitations as well. Now we can send more emails in a single transaction than we used to. Now the product teams made significant improvements to the functionality and also to the UI of the email action component. Now, without further ado, let me just dive into this short video and show you what changed and what additional functionality has just become available for you to email our Salesforce. I built an auto launch flow that I can easily use as a subflow in other types of flows, for example, to send an email out to my customers. Now, in this flow, I'm getting the contact record using the input variable contact ID variable. So the text variable will hold the contact ID and I will fetch the contact record and then I will send an email to this contact record using the new email action. Now, quick observations. We have now sections in the email action and these are collapsible sections. Now, the first section is configure recipient details the second one is configure sender details, and then we have the configure email content part. We have also an advanced setting that allows me to determine which version of this email action I want to use. This is also a brand new functionality that applies to other actions as well. Now on the configure recipient details side, we have a recipient address list. We can either type a couple of email addresses here separated by comma, or we can use a resource and pass this information into this input. And what we usually do in this case is we loop through contact records, for example, and then we accumulate, we build a string of email addresses separated by comma. Now we also have the functionality to use a text collection of email addresses which is fantastic because we can use, for example, the transform element to create a collection, a text collection of email addresses without looping from contact records. We can use a CC list, again, comma separated list. We can use a CC collection. We can use a BCC list and BCC collection. These are recent improvements to the email action. Now under configure sender details, we have several options. Now we had the option of choosing what type of sender we want to use, current user, default workflow user, or wide email address, but we had to remember the exact syntax of this and type that into this input, which was very annoying. Now we can actually choose what we want to use from this pull down. So current user is the default. We can use the default workflow user that's determined under process automation setting and setup. And we have org wide email address that we can use. And here, this setting here, this pull down is also brand new. So if we want to use the sender type from a pull down, we use the first setting here. But if we want to search resources and then point this to a resource that we have already created, could be a variable, it could be a constant that carries that value, and that value has to be obviously one of these here, then I can do that. So if I choose org wide email address, 
then I'm going to see that uh, the options actually come up here as well. Like, you know, I choose the pull down instead of a resource. Again, I can use a resource to pass that value in. But if I use this, let me cancel this out. I'll see the email addresses that are already set up in my org. And I can choose from that pull down, which is fantastic. To be able to use these email addresses, I have to set them up under org wide email settings in setup. Now, configure email content is brand new. Now we had kind of this second option here before we can use an email template. Ideally, you want to use a lightning email template here and we can actually pass again into this input, the email template ID using a resource. We can add attachment. We can add multiple attachments using a collection, which is fantastic. Now the recipient ID is when you want to send this email to a record that represents a person that could be a lead contact or a person account ID. This input you will use if you don't use uh, the email address collection or email address comma separated input. Now, in this case, I wanted to send this to the contact. So I'm going to use the contact ID variable that carries the contact ID, uh, which is being inputted into this flow. And I'm going to send this email to the contact record. Now, if this email is related to a case, for example, or an opportunity, you can also define a related record ID, which allows you to do two things. One is you can use um, in your template, in your email body, the field values for that record. You can use the case, name, number, type, and all that good information and add that information into your email body. You can also use obviously the, the contact record field values, the first name, last name in your email body. And another thing that this is used for is if you decide to log your email on send, this can be true or false, uh, then this email record inside Salesforce is going to be associated with both the recipient record and the related record, for example, case or opportunity. So they'll be related. You will be able to click through and view the email that was sent. Now, remember though, this setting actually changes your limitations in terms of how many emails you can send out. So research that uh, before you make that decision. And at some point, if you decide to log all your emails and you send high volume emails out of your org, you are going to run into storage limitations as well. So I wouldn't recommend, for example, logging the internal emails, but maybe you may need to log external emails for you to run an effective CRM implementation. Remember recently Salesforce increased the number of emails we can send in a single transaction to 150, which is a a fantastic improvement. This limitation, this limit is being shared with Apex. Remember that as well. So if you're sending emails using Apex and Flow in the same transaction, the total cannot exceed 150. So let's see what we have on this other side over here. So instead of using the email template, what you can do is you can actually type the content here. You can also insert a text template or a text variable or a constant into this to pass the subject information to your email action. But I'm going to say this is a customer reminder email. So that'll be the subject. I hard coded this, right? And for the body, I can either enter text here or search resources. Again, point to a text template resource inside my org, but I'm going to just build my content in the email action. This was not possible before, which makes 
the email action quite practical, but remember you'll be hard coding the contents, meaning uh, you will give up some flexibility if you want to kind of change the content of the email inside your email action based on decisions, formulas that may not be available for you. So you can insert a resource. I'm going to ref refer to the contact record here and then fill in the first name, for example. So I'm going to say, hello, first name. This is a reminder email. I have rich text formatting options here available. I can use either the rich text editor or the plain text editor. In most cases, you are going to use rich text editor here. And I would recommend you set this one always to true. If you're sending out rich text formatted emails, then you have to set it to true or you'll see all these rich text or HTML tags and they won't be um, used for formatting by the recipient's email client. But even if you send out a plain text email, this is not going to hurt anything. Use line breaks is uh, used for rare occasions. You can add attachments here using attachment ID. You can add a collection of attachments, which is fantastic. Now you can add multiple attachments. And the recipient ID is coming from the contact ID variable, as we discussed, and it's going to be the contact ID in a text variable. And here we can add a related record ID, whether it's case, opportunity ID, or uh, something else. Uh, but in this case, we don't have one. And we decided to log the email on sent. Uh, so that's going to be set to true. So let me just save the changes here and debug this to see in action. All right, so I have a contact ID variable here, the Andy Atkin contact is going to be used to send this email. Now we see this ran without problems, no stop signs. The contact record was found and the email action uh, successfully executed. The version is listed, the inputs are org-wide email address, it's being sent from sftcbreak at gmail.com. Compose email content is set to, set to true, meaning the email content has been built inside email action. Email subject is customer reminder. Email body is this uh, with the variable name here that's going to be used. And this after the variable value has been merged into the content. Hello, Andy. You'll see the first name being merged. And the rich text body flag is set to true. Recipient ID is the contact ID and log email on sent is true. Now let's see how this looks on the contact record. If we go to the activity, we'll see actually a pass due task here on top, but Right here, we see the customer reminder email that has been logged just now. Let me just click through it and I'll see, hello, Andy. This is a reminder email that has been logged inside the Salesforce org. So in a nutshell, this is what the email action can do for us folks. Enjoy. So if you like this video, give me a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Have a great day.